So if you've been watching my YouTube channels and also the videos for quite a while, just been looking into my biography on my social media, LinkedIn, Instagram or whatnot, you might realize that along with studying medicine, I have a lot of hobbies that I'm quite interested in. And there's one slight problem that whenever I do delve into my hobbies or start a new subs category within the same hobby that I'm into, is the idea of having newer and more specialized words that I haven't even come across, just so that I can have a better understanding or a better concept of what I'm I'm delving myself into. Be that for any medtech related things, any things that are to do with artificial intelligence, machine learning, any content creation, design work, or uh, anything research related even. I'm always, always bombarded with these new sets of words that are quite specialised in the field that I'm delving myself into. And quite frankly, most of the case is also that I've never heard of them as well. And what tends to happen is, as a result, when I have to have a better understanding of the concept of the new hobby that I'm going into, I also have to spend some time looking into those specialised words that they're using, trying to understand what the meaning behind them is, and just making sure that I know what the best use case of those is, and what the appropriate way of making sure that I've been able to utilise what the word actually means. For example, when I was getting myself into the world of design and being able to understand how logos creation work, colour schemes work and just the general overall be able to make a website along with a bit of coding. Things like favicon and other words kept on bringing up to make sure your website looks uh, as professional as possible. Now what does even favicon even mean? So I thought you can just need to make a logo and uh, put it onto your website and that's done and dusted. However for example favicon is a small little icon that stays on the tab. So when you have a website open and it has the tab open as well and it shows what exactly the title of the website is for example a home page next to the home page on the left hand side the majority of them if they are a good company and if they are a professional company as they say they will have a smaller size logo version of the actual overarching logo that small thing is called a favicon now why don't people just use that terminology rather than having to use those specialized words is it's just somewhat of a frustrating because for people like me who are at that time delving into an entirely new field it just became a bit more for her to where you have to spend more time on understanding what the different concepts are and these new terminologies versus actually proactively doing the task itself. Now I'm not saying that there's always this buffer period uh, a learning curve when it comes to new fields where you have to understand before you even do anything but it's more of these specialized words and these more so the intricate details that they bring along with it which, of course, in the field of wherever they are used, are quite common, but outside of it, you might never have heard of, or you might not even come across it. And I did find it quite annoying, because I do talk about, oh, do you have the best conceptual understanding of when you're going through or reviewing a concept to make sure that you have an expert understanding of it? I have talked about other details, like the productivity tips and things like the Feynman technique, which I have actually made a video about, where you are able to explain a complex concept to determine it have to be a complex concept, but you explain something in as simplest terms as possible to your potentially 10 year old or even 5 year old. And the level of understanding that they are able to get from your explanation shows how competent you are, rather than having to always use those specialized words. But here I am, having to jump through different Google pages or different websites, trying to understand and overcome those hurdles of terminology. And for these type of specialized words, we call them jargon. Now, in the medical field, for example, they, we have come across the word jargon, medical jargon specifically, more so especially when we're communicating to patients, where rather than talking about more in the scientific or medical terms, we have to say it in a bit more of a generalized terms, in plain, simple English, so that patients of any background are able to understand it, and they are able to have a better idea of what's happening. So being able to not have that jargon, a level of specialized words, uh, and speaking to that in the communication is usually vital as well. However, that jargon is still used. And be that as me, it doesn't get explained, unless if you really look hard into the meanings of things as to what they actually mean or under what context are they used. What's come to the worst, anyone unexperienced will just be more confused than what they actually started off with. However, as I developed my understanding of the different fields further, as I increased my skill within each of the hobbies that I'm into, I started to think about and have an outlook of the word jargon in a new light and somewhat appreciate it to an extent as well now. So, by definition, jargon or those specialised words are 
terminologies that a professional or a group of experts within that field typically use and it's not used outside of it. Henceforth, it becomes difficult for others outside of the field to understand. And so it got me thinking uh, when I had to juggle around being able to understand and also progress in terms of the skill of the hobby that I'm into, it got me thinking as to why do we even have these specialized words? Why do we even have jargon that only a few of us can use and be able to understand? Is it more so to block others from entering this community? Because more so it can be also a reason for other people to stop in their journey or stop them from progressing and just give up entirely. Or is it just more for culture to complicate things where it's not necessary? So we it looks like superficially that we have the insider knowledge. However, it did take me quite a while to wrap around the bigger picture as to why it's used or why it exists. As I mentioned, in the medical field, as a medical student, we have been taught to avoid jargon as much as possible, especially when speaking to patients. Henceforth, I've never really been encouraged to think about the positive outlooks of using jargon and the benefits it has amongst the peers within the same level are being more expert at the hobbies or the fields that I want to delve into. For example, saying a patient has tuberculosis rather than just a simple infection has a lot more meaning and a lot more contextual depth through to it, which makes the treatment and also the prognosis all the more precise and more tailor-made for the patient. It will also mean that another medical colleague reviewing the condition of the patient to be, have the clarity to know what the next steps should be, what the reflex should be and what are the risk factors to look out for while they are being treated for it. It is a change of a single word that allows myself and my peers to have that better understanding of what the symptoms are, what is actually happening, and obviously how to manage it as well. So essentially, what that means is that jargon is necessary when there's complex ideas or concepts that needs to be displayed and have to be indexed through words. It just allows groups, communities, and also professionals to instantly package the idea or the concept into smaller, more concise and conversational packages so that it becomes more of a gift of understanding where you are able to deliver the same idea across, the same meaning across, and have the same depth while using more concise terminology. For those who have to frequently use the same ideas multiple times, using specialized words, using jargon, allows them to save a lot of time and energy, have to be more descriptive, having to have having to talk about, for example, tuberculosis and to describe it as an infection and then talk about the area it affects the nature of uh, the infection and also the disease pathogen that causes it. It saves them a lot of trouble to just say, oh, it's a tuberculosis and, and they are able to then say, put that same energy where they could have potentially used to explain it in simpler terms to, again, another professional and instead delve that into what the treatment plan should be, what the symptoms have and specialize it in terms of on the future prospects rather than just delving straight into the knowledge that's already given to them. As a result, what tends to then happen is that when a community, for example, of any field that you would go into, be that medicine or any of the hobbies that I further of all or listed, when they start then creating a library of these specialized words where people can then index based on what they have to actually use it for, it saves the members of the community a lot of energy and a lot of time to not only have to describe what the words means when using it or when the application of the word is necessary. Amongst those same peers, there is no miscommunication, a misunderstanding that would ha happen. Otherwise, while well, if we were to use it with more words, are to actually be more descriptive as in layman terms. So it's the idea where, sure, I do still appreciate that the, it, creating those specialized words and having it still exist there does create a learning curve for anyone coming into or being introducing into the concert or the field that and they have just recently their interest into. However, it doesn't mean that it should make them strive away from something that they do actually enjoy as a field overall. If they are truly interested in it, they can spend time understanding it and then start using it as well. It might at face value at that start point may feel that oh this this is a lot of work which as, as I did when I was getting into it as well. However it's the whole idea again that once you get over that barrier it makes things a lot easier and you would appreciate having to go through that process of understanding of being able to have to make sure 
that you went forward and took some extra time in making sure that you have the proper communication unlock. So as a result, Chalgon doesn't really hold any of the outsiders back from entering into the community, entering into the field. However, it does allow the insiders, who are already part of the field, to thrive further and develop themselves further. So yeah, that was my take on uh, jargon, or the use of specialized words. It might be slightly controversial and there might be some mixed opinions about it as well. And I'm more than happy to listen to them down in the comments below. And I would love to be able to understand what your take is and see what you your personal opinions are as well. And have that small discussion going down in the comments. I'm looking forward to it. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.